Hey guys, it's Cove Sand here, and in this video we're going to be explaining what a proportional line follower is. So as the name suggests, a proportional line follower essentially follows a black and white line. So it actually doesn't follow the black line, and it doesn't follow the white line only. It follows the middle of the black and the white line. And the logic it uses to do this is very similar to the gyro straight function. So we're going to go over to the whiteboard and explain the pseudocode and the understanding of the line follower before we actually dig into Python and explain how to actually program it. So let's head over to the whiteboard and see what our logic and our understanding is going to be. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the pseudocode of the line follower. So what I've done, I've drawn a schematic or a diagram of our line. So essentially this red, that's just an imaginary boundary. And the reason why I've got an imaginary boundary is it's to represent that a line or a, on our FLO maps, we have a line. And this line is essentially a white line followed by a black line followed by another white line. Okay, and essentially what our robot's gonna do is if I draw a picture of our robot, which I'm going to do in orange, hopefully it comes out clear. Actually, I'll do it in green since it may come out a bit better. So our robot essentially, it doesn't follow the white and it doesn't follow the black. It actually follows the in-between of the black and the white. So if I draw this right here, hopefully that's clear. And that green box right there, essentially, if it's hovering over between the black and the white, it's gonna be between some percentage. Now you would have learned in science that the reflection of a black line is zero. If you didn't know that, you know it now. And a reflection of a white line is going to be 100. So in between a black and the white, it's going to be 50. And this is basically going to be uh, this number plus this number divided by 2 or 100 over 2. Now this is theoretically speaking. Realistically speaking, you're going to maybe have a reflection on your white line somewhere between 10 or even 5 to 10 and then your white line is going to be somewhere between 60 to 70. Now if you add these two numbers up, for example, let's just say we take 10 and 70, that's going to give us 80. Therefore, our reflection is going to be between the black and the white line somewhere between 40, however, anywhere between 20 to 40 is actually going to work. So I've just written down a bunch of numbers. All you have to know is that the reflection between the black and the white line for a line follower in an FLO map is normally somewhere between 20 to 40. You can try this yourself. All you have to do is hover the color sensor over the black and the white, and you'll see that it's somewhere going to be 20 to 40. You may get a lower number like 15, that will work as well. So just punch that number into your reflection. Now, how does it actually work? Well, it uses something called proportional logic. Um, that's why this is called a proportional line follower and essentially if it goes in one direction It's going to correct and go back into the other direction. So this black is a very high number So if we plug in 40 there if it goes hovers over the black It's going to see something like 50 or 60 It's then going to do 40 minus that 60 number and what's that going to give is negative 20 and it's going to move back in between the black and the white line So just like our gyro straight if we have a higher number, it's going to really oscillate between that right there but if you have a lower number, I'm going to use my orange for this, or I'll use the green again. If we have a higher number for our LFPK, it's going to be a fairly smooth LFPK. So just change your LFPK to what's good, and essentially it uses proportional logic to change its direction and it go back in the opposite direction. So hopefully that gives you a bit of understanding of how the line follower works. But now we're actually going to dig into the program. If you don't understand it, that's okay. It's more important that you can apply this. So understanding it, just ask questions, let me know, and I'll get back to you for that. Okay, so let's head over to the laptop now and explain how to program our line follower into Python. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code as always, and I'm gonna wait for it. So it's got my last program right here from our Gyro Straight video. I'm going to go into my EV3 tab and create a new project because we're not going to be using this gyro straight. Now, in reality, um, our gyro straight looks very similar to our line follower. The only difference is instead of initializing a gyro, we then initialize a light sensor. And um, correspondingly, we change all of our gyro angles to light angles. So I'll just create a new project so we don't have to, we can do everything from scratch. So I'm going to call this line underscore follower, press enter and select this folder right here and let's save our changes okay so now this should be fairly familiar territory again we're going to go to main.py and we have to initialize everything again so our first initialization process um, we're going to put our left motor left motor and that's going to equal our motor but it's going to be in port dot b we're then going to do our right motor which is very similar except instead of left it's right so i'm going to change this 
EFT to right. And instead of motor B, it's in motor C. We're then going to use robot, and that equals our drive base. And then we're going to use left motor, right motor. All of this is, uh, we've done this multiple times now. So hopefully you guys have a fair understanding of the initialization, initialization process. Wheel diameter, underscore diameter. And for mine, that's going to be 55.5, make sure it's an ER, equals 55.5. And then our axle track, underscore track, equals 104. Okay, so that is our initialization process, but that is only for the robot and its motors. We now need to initialize our color sensor. So if you remember to the sensors video, to initialize a light sensor, you first choose your object name. I'm going to use light because we're going to be using reflected light intensity in this video. We're going to use color and sensor. So because this is an American made program, you have to use the American version, which is L-O-R instead of L-O-U-R if you're in Australia or England or another country. So we have that color sensor and now we just have to specify the port. And I've got mine in port dot S2. Okay, so that was my light sensor and how to initialize it. So that's all we need to initialize for this video. Uh, at the end of the day, now that you know what a gyro straight is and what a line follower is, you're going to have a massive initialization process where you initialize all your motors, all your sensors, and the drive base function. But we'll worry about all of that later. So this is just for the light sensor video. So now I'm going to go enter and I'm going to delete this speaker.beep. I feel like it should delete itself by now. But unfortunately, Visual Studio Code doesn't have um, artificial intelligence to understand that we don't want it. Okay, so. I'm going to quickly like, uh, write our basic line follower program. So let me write down while robot.distance. And you can probably guess why we have robot.distance because this is quite similar to the gyro straight video. We're going to be using a, um, a function where essentially we're going to control the distance over which it follows the line. And so I'm going to put about 1000 here. And now I'm going to calculate within this, put a colon. I'm then going to calculate my corrections. So just like the gyro straight video, instead of going zero minus gyro straight angle, we're going to go the reflection between the black and the white, which for me is about 30, and then minus that from the light reflection. So to get the light reflection, you go light dot reflection, and just to show you where I got this from, if we open up the user guide, and we go back to our color sensor, and then our color sensor is here, we can calculate the reflected light intensity using our reflection and two brackets, and we run this over our object name, which is light. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna calculate the correction or the raw correction. So if it veers off 30 by about five, it's gonna go into the white because it's a higher number. And then we're going to do 30 minus 35, which is negative five, and it's gonna go into the opposite direction. So it's always going to hover over that 30 number or in essentially it's gonna follow in between the black and the white line. So that's what this 30 minus light reflection is. If you remember in the gyro straight video, our corrections aren't very fast when you have it like this. We need to add a constant, or in our gyro straight video, this was called GSPK. In our line follower video, this is going to be called LFPK. So just remember those two names, and now I'm going to multiply this by two. And your LFPK is going to be different to your GSPK because we're using a different sensor and we're in different environments. Um, and this will calculate the exact correction you need to put into our robot.dry function, which is what we're going to do next. So robot dot Drive. Okay, so now that I have my robot to drive function here, if you remember, the first variable that goes to robot to drive is the speed. So for our speed, I'm going to put a slower number because our line follower operates over a slow value. I'll show you what happens if we put a higher value into our robot to drive very soon. And after that, we now need to put our turning speed or our turn rate. So if you go back to our robotics tab right here and go down to robot to drive, as you can see, it's our turn rate, and this is essentially going to be the correction. Right, because we want to turn in the direction of our correction. So just like the gyro straight video, we're going to put in correction right there. Okay, so now that we have our 100 and our correction, now all we need to do is make the robot come to a breaking stop. And to do that, you do robot.stop. And make sure you have two brackets open right there. You're then going to do robot.break. And that's actually supposed to be left motor, not robot. So left motor.break. And then we can copy paste this and then copy, put it back there and then right motor the break. So let me just change the left to right. 
Okay, so essentially this is a line follower and it's gonna be at a slower speed. It's gonna follow the line and for my reflection value, it's gonna be about 30. So this is because my white value was a little bit around 70 to 80 and my white and my black value was somewhere between five to 10. So just the in-between of those two values for me, it's gonna be 30. Now the good thing about a line follower is that the range for the reflection is going to be quite high. So you don't have to worry too much about um, finding the exact value. Whereas for the LFPK, that's gonna be uh, quite an important number to iterate and to change to find the exact value. So let's see what this program actually looks like. Okay, so as you can see, it simply followed that line and it did a pretty good job of it too. So when it came to the angles, it went past them, but I've changed and used my numbers very specifically. Uh, another thing I wanna show you is what happens if you drive too fast over your line follower. So if I put 250 instead of 100, and if you remember the robot.drive actually uses meters per second. So 250 meters per second is 25 centimeters per second. Um, and that's essentially going to be the length of a 30 centimeter ruler, just a little bit off in every single second, so that's quite fast. Um, so let's see what it looks like if we use a line follower really fast. So as you can see, that was quite um, not very good because it found a line and it did a good job at the start because those angles weren't that big. However, at the massive angle at the end, it just went off the line. So with our line follower, you really want to use slower speeds. And you might see this as a disadvantage because you have a time limit. But the thing is, you're not going to be using your line follower for very long amounts of time when it comes to your robot game. You're just going to be using your line follower to reference yourself along mission models. You're going to be using your gyro straight, which can go out high speeds most of the time. So you really don't have to worry about the speed component of the line follower. Okay, you might also be asking what happens if you want to line follow backwards and forwards. Now the thing about line following backwards is if I refer to the robot right here, the reason why it can't line follow backwards is because the sensor needs to be before the wheels for it to work. So we have in this configuration right here, we have our line follower, our color sensor right here. It's then going to provide the information to the EV3 and the corrections are going to go straight into the wheels. However, if it was the other way, if our sensor was here and then our, line, our wheels are here, our, li our line follower is going to go forward and then it's going to apply the values to this color sensor right here. So all you need to understand from that is that the line follower cannot work backwards unless you specifically have a color sensor behind right here. Luckily, there are three ports in your um, EV3 uh, that are open. If you use one for the gyro, you then have another three that are open. So you can put two at the front, one at the back, and you'll be able to line follow forward and back. You can also just put three at the front and that will be a completely fine, but you just can't line follow backwards. So those are two important considerations you need to take into account. Okay, so what if we wanna use this line follower for multiple purposes? Well, as you can see, we've plugged numbers into here. So our distance is gonna change. Our reflection may change based on our environment because if you're in a highly lit environment, then the distance between black and the white or the reflection is going to change. Whereas if you're in a very dull environment, it's going to change as well. So this might change. And then the other thing that will change is this too, the LFPK. The final thing that will change is the speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to distance and go there. And now I'm gonna write distance equals, and this now creates a variable. So I'm gonna put a thousand right there. I'm gonna change this 30 to reflection. And I'm gonna set up my reflection right there. And I'm gonna make my reflection equal. Uh, and for me, I'm gonna put 30 again. Now my LFPK, and I'm gonna put another variable called LFPK. That equals two. For you, this will change, so it depends on your scenario. And finally, I've got my speed, which is right here. So I'm gonna put speed equals 250. Okay, so as we said, that speed of 250 was too high. Um, however, I'm not gonna show you any more examples because that was essentially the line follower in a nutshell. We've now made it a variable. So now you can change these numbers and that will automatically change the program. Now, if you wanted to create a line follower program where it goes forward with one sensor and backwards with another sensor, what you're going to need to do is create an if else statement 
And then based on the sensor that you put in, it's then going to change the if or the else statement. So it's either going to go forward with one sensor or it's going to go backwards with another sensor. Now this is a very specialized case. And if you do have a question like this um, and you're struggling with it, just reply to me in the comments or just let me know and I'll get back to you with that. So that was essentially the line follower video in a nutshell. Uh, it's quite simple and it's very effective. So hopefully you found this informative and you'll be able to use it in your FLL season. So thanks, see ya.